Hero 1, Lost Zone Box versus Guard of Oryx, the two top decks in this format. The two top decks, the two most played decks as well. A match that I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot today and a lot of worlds as well coming up. Uh, this Valdevol format, this will be a classic, right? The back and forth, the Cresselia against Cramorant battles, the sniping of Sableye, it's, it's definitely going to be happening a lot this season, and I'm really excited to see these top two players battle it out in this round 10 of Swiss. Victor looking to continue this perfect start, but hey, Angus hasn't lost a game yet. Took a tie yesterday, but both of these players very well positioned. Our first and second seeds, I believe, of this tournament so far. And looking at the list, Victor has that drafty on beat. Always great to hit that weakness against Gardevoir EX, but Gardevoir has really kind of evolved in its playstyle against Lost Zone Box in this format. Yeah, I definitely think Iono, especially, is pretty important now. It's a great tool for Gardevoir decks to be able to disrupt opponents. They used to be able to play Judge or Roxanne, but both like less impactful than Iono for sure. And there's the extra mechanic of putting cards at the bottom of your deck instead of shuffling your deck, where Lost Box players are always keeping the good cards in their hand, right? They have a choice with Colrez, they have a choice with Comfey, and they're keeping the good resources that they want to keep available into their hand, and then you're not only taking away those resources, but putting them at the bottom of their deck. Well, here we go, Pablo. Starting off round 10 of day two here at Columbus for the North American International Championships. Victor is going first here. Always great to see with that Gardevoir. Ultra Balls away, a Collapse Stadium, and a Curlia. So not the best discard with that Curlia, but you still need Pokemon. You need to get set up so you can get those Gardevoir in play. Exactly. Uh, Ultra Ball is definitely the one of the most impactful cards to get on turn one because it's very costly. Right? Usually you want Ultra Ball to discard your energies, to find your Gardevoirs, but using an Ultra Ball to find a Mew when you have Battle VIP, Pass, Fog, Crystal, or even Level Ball, does immediately give Victor a little bit of information that Angus's hand might not be as ideal as he would like, and so he has to try and get that chance off the Battle VIP Pass off of this Mysterious Tail. There is the energy for the retreat. Top six for Mysterious Tail. Can only find an item card looking for that Battle VIP Pass. Level Ball, and that's going to have to do. Well, I mean, it's half a battle VIP pass, yeah. I guess, so it's it's not horrible. Um, definitely not the card you want to find, but chooses to go Manaphy, interestingly enough. Maybe knows that Victor's deck is very focused on going, like, full turbo mode, trying to get that turn one. It's less likely to happen with a Sableye start, but still possible. So Angus really valuing protecting that Ralts, that couple of Ralts that he does have in his hand right now. Yeah, I feel like it's a little bit safer with the second Ralts in the hand. Victor starts things off with the Chorus's Experiment. Has another one in hand, too, which you always love to see if you're a Lost Zone Box player. But these five cards are a little bit awkward. They're cards that you kind of want later on. No Comfey just yet. Yeah, no Comfey, no help to find Comfey. Uh, no ways to draw extra cards through Greninja and Energy and whatnot. So, yeah, the deck is full of really good cards, but not all of them are useful in the beginning. Well, having the Ultra Ball for your basic Pokemon, <laughs> seems like both players are forced to do that here. Ultra Ball discards Luminion V and that Super Rod. It's going to have to find Radiant Greninja, Comfey. Possibly. Uh, both cards potentially good, uh, doing some price checks. But I do want to point out how both Luminion and Ultra Ball are very unique choices for Victor. They're not staples in the common Lost Box decks. And, I mean, Angus now knows that Victor plays them. They're not going to affect anything in particular that Vic that Angus will try to do against Victor. But um, I especially like the Ultra Ball. Yeah, the Ultra Ball is a very nice card, not only because you can find any Pokemon, and he's married a little bit more to Luminion since you need to play that from hand, but also towards the end of the game, seeing how much Iono affects uh, these sort of decks, you get to thin extra cards, right? Those leftover battle VIP passes that you didn't get to use or send to a loss zone. Extra energy or excess Pokemon that you don't need, 
you're not putting them back when you get Iono to 3 to 2 to 1. Therefore, you're increasing the chances of finding the right cards that you do actually need to close out a game. So you're not supposed to keep your concert tickets after you go and all that stuff? <laughs> no, not quite. Those oh, are, okay. I mean, not in Pokemon at least. Okay. <laughs> Ultra Ball does find Radiant Greninja here, valuing the concealed cards to try to find those Battle VIP pass that you were saying. Comfey just wouldn't be able to do it quite as well. Yeah, I mean, they're both cards give you two extra cards, but um, Comfey does come at a big cost. The concealed cards gets used, and there's a lot of switching cards for a lot of Comfey's that are not available right now, and we just see a pass with zero cards in the Lost Zone. Not something you want to see as Lost Box. Well, there's, there's two cards. Uh, the the cores. Right, right. Yeah. Sorry, that's my bad. Uh, Angus does have Iono, though, so that is the supporter of choice here. Doesn't have much else other than that, having to rely on the top six to try to find those Curlia. But that does mean that the Chorus experiment in Vicar's hand it goes to the bottom of the deck, but has more of a chance to find some come phase now. Exactly. It's a, a bittersweet moment for Victor oh, loses no. the Chorus. Oh, wow. That's a great turn one hand. That is a great turn one hand. Unfortunately, uh, it's turn two. Yeah, now needs to find a level ball. There it is for the first Kirlia. So can start a sort of Kirlia chain going right here, but definitely those double battle VIP pass in hand can be hurtful. Now we do know one Kirlia is in the prizes. The other is in the discard pile. So not a lot of access to that overall here. Does get the first one down on that Ralts. Chooses to evolve the Ralts without the energy. Hoping to maybe find Rare Candy Gardevoir. Uh, just trying to be able to draw a couple more cards. And has the option to discard Psychic or Battle VIP Pass here. I think it's going to be the Psychic. Or, oh, Battle VIP Pass. Finds Boss's Order's energy. That's not going to help. Yeah, definitely not the best situation for Angus. I would have liked to see that Fog Crystal being played before the Kirlia. You know your hand is definitely not very good at this point in time. So getting an extra card out of the deck, it doesn't seem like it's super impactful. There's a lot of cards in the deck still left already, but it's a small advantage that you give yourself, right? Keep your, giving yourself these small advantages throughout the whole game, and all of a sudden, you're going to build to a big advantage in the late game does find that Cresselia with its Moonglow Reverse so important in this matchup against Lost Zone Box, being able to spread a couple damage all around your second Pokemon and take knockouts on cards like Comfey and that Sableye. Victor's going to look to start uh, selecting some flowers here. And speaking of sequencing, I love playing the Nest Ball because you know the Colossus experiment is at the bottom of the deck. So you want to be able to shuffle so you have better odds of drawing that powerful supporter. Exactly. Playing those shuffle cards before you start doing any other actions just slightly increases your chance of finding that Colossus off of these comfies. But also, uh, there's merit to realizing when you need to not shuffle your deck before you play other cards, even though you'd be thinning your deck by playing a search card you'd actually be decreasing your chances by modifying all the bottom cards at the very bottom. So off to a slightly better um, start here in the second turn. No call risk, but some access to Comfey. And there's a Cramorant. Yeah, I feel like we've definitely not seen Cramorant enough so far. I really like it as a resource for Lost Box. And you know against Card of War, you need to apply pressure. The fact that Victor couldn't pull that off on turn one already sets him a little behind in terms of where he would like to be moving forward. But now, this is a very crucial turn to utilize Cramorant. And for a second, I was a little bit worried seeing the Cramorant instead of the Comfey, but having the one in hand and the he Hisuian Heavy Ball, I already knew one was prized. So you have access to both of those flower selectings now, especially with the switch carts and escape rope in hand. Yeah, that shows a lot of awareness by Victor in terms of the resources he knows he needs and has access to throughout a game. And we should have enough switching cards to see our first, I believe, Spit Innocently. <laughs> At least in a while, uh, Cresselia gets brought up to the active. It's the one Pokemon that can take a hit from that Spit Innocently. And wow, 
Colorus' experiment found off the first flower selecting, getting rid of Battle VIP Pass. That's exactly how you want it. And wow, getting rid of another one. All right. This hand's opening up. Yeah, you really cannot ask for a better choice from Comfy. Uh, after turn one, being able to choose Colrus, which is essential, and loss on a completely useless card, that's the dream. You know? And now this escape rope is really good from Victor. Probably the Mew will be sacrificed. Uh, surprisingly, it's her Ralt. I'm very, um, I guess, Angus's hand is less than ideal, so there's a little merit to this, but um, yeah, this way you can reach for another Curlia to an extent, but never feels good losing a Ralt here. Not at all, but I guess when you're down to Curlia already, there's a little bit of leeway there that uh, Manaphy is definitely needed, and Mew with your hand being how it is, you need the, any extra help you can get. Yeah, the Mew fetching the Ultra Ball to discard energy. Going to be pretty good. Uh, Angus will actually be able to pressure with Cresselia this turn, with en which ends up being very, very powerful. That energy on the Ralts being um, a little, uh, <laughs> I don't know, like a lone stray card at this point in time, not proving to be very useful. Hopefully that doesn't affect him in terms of using Munglo over and over. But with the Cardivore EX in hand, the Iono, you know you're going to be able to pressure at least a lot this turn, so should be pretty good for Angus. Already used the one refinement here. And there's at least two energy in the discard. Third one now with that concealed cards. Find another Ralts, but also the Super Rod going to be able to shuffle back in that Ralts and Curlia. Hopefully find it again. Angus really putting a lot of value into the other Pokemon, not so much the Ralts line. There's Mew, there's Cresselia, there's Manaphy, there's Gardevoir. So all the supporting cast is here for Angus. Um, we are going to oh. see the Iono, which is pretty good, right? Um, Does not evolve the Gardevoir EX, though. Yeah, no evolution. That's true. I am very surprised. Maybe Angus has other plans. Um, does find an Ultra Ball, so can definitely evolve regardless uh, but yeah I don't under yeah I don't understand why you wouldn't want to keep up with the pressure right your opponent's attacking you now you get to attack them this means Angus could possibly be two two prizes down which you can recover from but is also not ideal if you can only be one prize does have that shiny kind of Gardevoir but it gets discarded to the refinement here Worker, level ball, retreat into no one. All right, passing of the turn. Pretty yeah. surprising. It felt like Angus had a pretty good turn to try to set up a KO on something like a Comfey. Yeah, could have sniped a Comfey, had the Cresselia, which could not be KO'd by Cramorant. Now, this escape rope will mean victor either gets a knockout on something more valuable or pre-damages the Cresselia, right? Which is, sure, you're not losing a prize as Angus, but you're opening up yourself to the fact that Cresselia gets hit for 110 and then Sableye can potentially finish that off with a Curlia or a Mew or the Menafi, and it's two prizes over the course of two turns. So even though victor will not get a prize card here, that's still okay. You know, I, I think we're wrong. Was that Angus' second turn? Did he just already evolve the Krillia? <laughs> oh, I'm yeah, getting yeah. so ahead of myself. You are completely, Listen, completely it's right. It's early. It's early. All right. I am yeah, I'm playing <laughs> so far ahead into the future. That is completely my bad. Yeah. we. I just went with the Gardevoir EX being in the hand. I, <laughs> that is completely my bad. Now, Victor here has a pretty good turn three, already eight in the loss zone. Has access to Mirage Gate if he wants, but still missing the last two cards for a critical loss mine here. No Colorus' experiment in hand, but does have a boss's orders. Switch cart to the Cramorant. We're going to take a knockout on this Curlia with the energy. Only one boss's orders in the list, so pretty nice for Victor to have it at the right time. But this is definitely one of the best uses I could possibly have for it. Um, you could also want it in the late game to power up your Drapion V, Drapion V, and boss up a Gardevoir EX. 
Uh, but yeah, this also works out very nicely. Deny one of the two Curlias that Angus has. Kind of work out very nicely to try and stop Angus from doing much in the late game. Looking at the hand for Angus here. Does have that Iono, so six for Angus, four for Victor here. But Victor's hand wasn't really that good. Uh, still can try to find the course experiment. Double battle VIP pass. Get to discard one of them with refinement here. Eight cards in the loss zone for Victor, so getting close to that. Sableye, Angus can snipe that Sableye potentially with Cresselia this turn. If possible, um, haven't been able to take a look at his hand just yet. Finally, we might see the card where he acts because it is now turn three. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that works. Funny how that works, indeed, yeah. Can't evolve the same Pokemon twice in a turn. The rules of Pokemon. <laughs> you think we know it. You think we know it. I was definitely getting too far ahead into the actual game and skip there it. There it is. The steps. There's the Cardivore EX. The most beautiful Cardivore EX out of all of them, I would say, as well. And we're going to see the Cresselia Snipe. So, as Angus, um, you know there's already eight cards in the Lost Zone. So, I feel like you'd want to worry more about, yep, knocking out the attacker as opposed to the research of Comfey. And without knowing exactly what sort of Pokemon recovery, Victor plays in terms of how many Superods, how many Claras, if there's any Claras. I think sniping the Pokemon after an Iono, the potential attacker, is very, very good here. Now, Victor does have a Nest Ball to replace that Sableye that was just knocked out. Looking to get two more in the Lost Zone to activate that Lost Mine attack. Now, I didn't get a good look at the hand from the Iono, but if a Colrus's Experiment is there, that's the last two needed. Otherwise, going to need a couple Switch Cart Escape Rope to try to make that happen. Yeah, and going for that Sableye definitely might give you a little bit of an indication of what Victor is planning. Needs to keep up with the price trade, needs to keep applying pressure. Does have one escape rope, does have the Colrus as well. So shoveling has his hand so much he couldn't see it properly, but there's the Colrus. Will get to 10, and no Psychic Energy found, but with him, Rashgate will be able to power that Sableye up. You also get to retreat the active if you want, grabbing a second energy. And looks like Echoing Horn is going to be the choice along with that Mirage Gate and one of the energies. It seems like Echoing Horn is a card that is actually pretty great in this matchup. It is, yeah. There's 60 HP Ralt, 60 HP Mew, which at some point could allow you to take a two price turn with Sableye. Not something commonly seen outside of. Kyogre Lost Box decks, but always a nice combination to have with Sableye can open up some win conditions that perhaps your opponent did not realize or wasn't really playing around. I know if you're a Guard Over player, you play Super Odd, you're not wanting to put Mew back a lot of the time, but that could end up being costly in some situations if your opponents are playing that Echoing Horn at the right time. Super odd in hand as well. Probably going to have to play that just because there's not a lot of energy left in the deck. You see there, a couple of water, a couple of lightning. You got a couple in hand. You need to put these back just so you can use Mirage Gate. Gets that Psychic, though. That's the most important one. Yeah, Psychic being the key card. Only playing two copies of Psychic Energy, two copies of Lightning, and four of Water. So very thin on the energy here for Victor. Also put back the Luminion. V, which I really, really like to have as a resource for later down the line. You never know when you're one Clara away from an the game, right? Or when you need to call this experiment to reach that last crucial card in order to win a game. So pretty cool to see. There's also Forest Healstone as well, accessibility, so you might get a supporter and a Mirage Gate that you may need. Plenty of combinations that when you're running low on cards with Iono, every individual card matters. You definitely don't want to be drawing those Battle VIP pass off an Ion under one. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Now, with Lost Mine here, uh, there's really only one decision, right? You've got to knock out that Cresselia. I guess you can try to target down that Manaphy, but any other damage you're going to put down is just going to help that Moonglow reverse. Yeah, there's only one Pokemon that you can knock out in 
the Mew, um, and that you could possibly have leftover damage to knock something else out, but with no 260 HP Pokemon, definitely not the call. You could knock out the Ralts, you could knock out the Manaphy open up, Greninja, but Cresil is the threat right now, the least um, cost-effective Pokemon for Angus to lose. So dealing with that Cresselia, forcing your opponent to start utilizing the Gardevoir EX or the Curlia, um, or the shinier kind of Gardevoir, pardon me, uh, more aggressively is part of your goal. However, seems like Victor is going to value eliminating those Ralph's pieces a little bit more. Well, if you do think about it, this is just going to leave that Gardevoir EX in play. Uh, Curlia has been knocked out. Ralts has been knocked out. Another Ralts here. Trying to limit just the actual ability to maneuver throughout this game uh, and giving Angus just really two options. Indeed. I do like putting five on the Mew as a way to like stop that from getting powered up. Uh, definitely want to put all the damage on one Pokemon because you know Cresselia will be healing through Moonglow next turn. Um, but yeah, I would have liked to see that. Uh, perhaps a little bit of damage on Mew. Uh, maybe there's not that big of a difference, but eliminating Manaphy also pretty good because then you open up some Radiant Greninja plays where if your opponents are benching those Ralts again, that could be problematic. And one issue that Angus has right now is that his leftover Ralts has 60 HP. And that does mean that if Victor, if Angus benches that, then that opens up the Sable IK double KO on Mew and Ralts, which is the reason why Angus didn't bench it here. And what a madman. Angus taking the prizes randomly. <laughs> Definitely not something we often see. Uh, there's no real advantage to taking prizes out of order or in order, right? They're completely random, so peculiar to see, but not a big deal. Concealed cards to start things off for Victor's turn. There's a handful of Pokemon V. You see that Drapion V in there? That is going to be one of the key Pokemon to try to finish this game off for Victor. One of the ways, only ways to take a big one-hit knockout on that Gardevoir EX. Indeed. Now the boss's orders is gone. It was utilized earlier to KO a Cramorant. There is a copy of Palpat, however, so putting that back could be important, and it's another way that you have, along with Luminion, along with Force Hillstone, to combat those Ionos, right? Late game when your deck is getting pretty thin, and you put two Colrus back, right? Or the Colrus and the boss back, that can be very, very impactful in terms of maximizing your chances of finding the game-winning cards. Especially because you have a better chance of drawing into it. You're putting your hand on the bottom of the deck, and it's already looking pretty low. I would say maybe 15 cards there. Colossus Experiment found with that Luminous Sign will be able to dig even further. And the Pokestop in hand. That is uh, one card we haven't seen yet because both of them were in the prize cards. <laughs> yeah. Now, Super Red is a key card that Victor would love to find here to recover Sableye, but then after you recover the Sableye, you also need to find it, right? And we do see the Four Seal Stone. Very nice combination of cards that Victor found. And actually... With the Artisan and the First Seal Stone getting back to Superrod, we could actually see Sableye be utilized again for a two-price turn, knocking out Manaphy and knocking out Mew, which would put Victor in, honestly, can't be in a better position. Perhaps uh, getting Iono down to one, uh, establishing an extra threat somehow would be the ideal situation for Victor, but being one price of win with your opponent still needs to take four, and if they boss the Luminion, right, which is a liability, that could also be um, an issue for Angus because then that means Victor gets to keep his humongous hand intact, right? No Iona, you cannot do both. With that four seal stone, it does have access to the Super Rod in the deck. I do believe it's the last copy, two in the discard already, that Clara, you can see in the Lost also Zone. Gone. So really has to maximize the use of this Super Rod. Had the Sableye in the deck already from the previous one. Yep. Has that Psychic Energy in hand, perhaps? I would hope so. I would hope so. Yeah, so 
a lot of things happening. Hard to keep track of exactly every single card from Superod. Um, what's in the deck, what's not in the deck. But yeah, Sableye, two price turn, pretty fantastic. And it's all about how does Victor close out the game. Angus shouldn't be benching any more Pokemon at all. Uh, Victor does have that um, Echoing Horn to put something back into play to open up another win condition. It also helps in trying to thin your hand out, expecting the Iono to one coming up very, very soon. And we're going to see that escape rope. I like how did not even give the information as to whether he had the energy ready or not, yeah. which is really cool to see. Um, often, even though it's your obvious play, it might not be obvious for your opponent. So the less information you give them, the better. And with the Four Seal Stone, we actually have a lot of certainty against an Iono to one. And again, saving it just in case. And here's that lost mine. 40 on the Manaphy, 60 on that Mew. And honestly, this 20 probably won't matter too much, but I'd like to see it on something like that Greninja, maybe. Uh, yeah. Have the Cramorant be able to knock it out. Same thing with the Cresselia. Exactly. You'd imagine Angus might try to attack with the highest HP Pokemon um, this turn, which would be the Guard of War EX, and that would allow... Um, like, the damage shouldn't be getting killed. If it does, then that means there's other Pokemon in play. I'm surprised the Echoing Horn didn't see play this turn in particular. Uh, sure, you give your opponent access to a potential Kirlia, but you also make sure that there's something easier in range than the Cresel if it gets healed. But there we have it. Angus scooping up the cards, and Victor takes game one in this magical undefeated streak. Yeah, one more game away from starting 10-0 at the largest Pokemon tournament in history. Insane. Insane to think about. Lost Zone Box doing what it does. Sableye keeping the format yet again. Yeah, Sableye definitely a card that has had a lot of debate recently. It's a very powerful card, and it really punishes those low HP basic Pokemon. Yeah, Guard of X, Shining Arcana, very powerful Pokemon, very powerful cards. But in order to get them into play, you need to evolve through those Ralts, those Curlias, which are very vulnerable to those damage counters from Sableye. Now, we had 80, 90, 100 HP basics, which I feel like were due to happen. That would make these Stage 2s a lot more viable than they currently are. Yeah, they have to be pretty crazy, like a, a Gardevoir EX or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> or a uh, Bax Caliber. Yeah. I mean, it's either you have these incredible abilities to justify playing them, or you cheat them into play, like Lugia Vistar does with Arceus, or Luxury has its own built-in ability in that order to play itself down without having to play through a Shinx. That is one card that we still have not seen yet, but I thought would make more of an impact is that Luxray from Paldea Evolved. Taking a look at the prize cards here, couple of energy for Angus, a couple of energy for Victor, but that Sableye in the prize cards. I uh, might have to prioritize swinging the heavy ball later on so you can get those Sableye chains going. But does start a Comfe. I mean, well, Angus starting that Mew. You love to see it. Yeah, both players with uh, presumably much better starts. Having that Artisan to thin the deck, having that Mew to dig for the Battle VIP pass, having also more um, surge cards in the hand, much more fluid start for Angus. We might see more Ralts being prioritized. I'm not sure if last game he could have foregone one mana fee uh, for a Ralts, seeing how Victor didn't have like the most explosive start. But um, you never know. And wow, <laughs> doesn't even check the rest of the cards, just immediately grabs the LVIP pass. And this shows how aware Angus is of the time we probably won't have time to play a game three here, but if Angus manages to win this game two, then he will at least get a point out of this, which is definitely better than zero. Yeah, a match win is three points, a loss is zero, but a tie is one. So 
only thing you have to worry about is too many ties. You're not going to have enough championship or enough points at the end to make it into top eight. Both these players, though, at the top of our seeding here so far in a good position to try to make a good deep run in day two. Double level ball here. Uh, that's great to get set up, but you're going to be missing those when you're trying to find those Curlia. Indeed, definitely not the best way to set up your rolls, but setting up your rolls is better than not doing so. So Angus off to a much stronger start here. Already has the mana fee protection in case Victor gets a pretty crazy turn with the uh, lost vacuums and whatnot to activate turn one um, Rash Gate, which would still be hurtful, but now with the Manaphy protection, there's less benefit to it. Attaches that energy to the Ralts on the bench. Victor has that battle VIP pass, though, so both players getting that powerful item on their first turn. We're going to see Victor here look through the deck, make sure to check what is prized. And it's potentially, do you just grab Radiant Greninja Comfe? Do you grab Cramorant at all in this position? I mean, depends on the rest of your hand, of course. Uh, if you can't get to four, I think, once again, initiating the price trade, getting ahead, because if Angus doesn't immediately have Rare Candy Guard of Oryx to power up some sort of attacker, then you know you're probably going to be two prizes ahead. Or if you attack into a Greninja, you'll still only be one price ahead, but then if you follow that up with Sableye, finish off the Greninja, pick something else off, like the Manaphy, then you're still three prizes ahead in three turns. So, pretty good. And we do see that Victor is already holding the Colrus in their hand, so there, that does give more merit to the Kremlin. Can access that second Comfe with the Artisan that Angus uh, played himself. Oh, that is true, yeah. Not yeah. about that stadium. So with that in mind, the four cards are guaranteed. It's all a matter of can you retreat into the Kremlin and or do you actually want to play down the Luminion, which, like I said before, it's definitely a liability, but any turn that your opponent is going boss KO Luminion is a turn they're not doing Iono, take away your hand. So there is value to having something like that. You can try to create these like distractions, if you will, for your opponent, where if they're doing that, as we see right there, then you're not getting your hand Ionode disrupted, and you're also getting ahead, right? You would love to play this Cold Rest without playing the Luminion, but it's what you have to do in order to win the game. Not doing so to not have a liability, but then you're not attacking, it doesn't really pay off. That powerful Luminous Sign ability does find that Cold experiment. And this also opens up uh, for Sealstone to help extend this turn if Victor chooses, but really, just needs an energy and a switching card. Should be able to pull together at least four in the law zone and take a knockout with Cramorant, depending on escape ropes. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Pokey stop also very useful at this point in time. Oh, wow. Very nicely. Wow. <laughs> Draw three. One of them's a lost vacuum. That's going to help extend even further, potentially even getting to seven in the law zone, depending on these flower selectings and a course experiment. Oh, yeah. well, that's an easy choice. <laughs> easy choice right there. I feel like when you get those sort of choices, you might not want to immediately throw the card away because then that gives a little bit of information to your opponent uh, in terms of what other choice you might have had. Like if it's a Val VIP pass, sure. But when you're throwing a card away so quickly, then that could tell your opponent, right, that it's actually a duplicate. And um, I mean, if they're paying a lot of attention, then having that little piece of extra information could alter their play in some way, right? Pokemon is a game about information. The more you have, the better you can do at trying to win the game. And honestly, the third water energy uh, in as little as two turns could be a little rough for the, these Mirage Gates going forward. And I have to rely on something like Super Rod to shuffle those back into the deck. But has that escape rope, we'll be able to bring up the Comfey and Angus, rightly so, brings up that Radiant Greninja to try to tank a hit from Cramorant and it spit innocently. Yeah, very nice to try and prevent that knockout, but I will say, by Angus not losing a Pokemon here, then that takes away the possibility of playing down Cresselia because there isn't a bench space open 
to do that. So sure, you're not giving up a prize, but you're also not going to be doing the best possible play that you could do, which is return KO with Cresselia, disrupt your opponent a little bit, maybe prevent them from getting to 10 cards in the Lost Zone next turn. But the most important thing is like your one prize, Cresselia, is able to take more than one prize. And that's the sort of thing you need to do, make your Pokemon very cost effective so that you can make up any price deficit that you're in, which usually you are against Lost Box. Sable I found off the Nest Ball here. Yeah, take a look at that. that. And there's an energy and a switch card. I feel like Angus did have the potential to get seven in the Lost Zone, but with all the energy drawn from the Colors' experiment and these flower selectings, no targets for the Mirage Gate. And it's just going to have to settle with the Spit Innocently into the Radiant Greninja. 110 damage, 20 left. Definitely less payoff to get to seven this turn because of the mana fee protecting the bench, but there definitely was merit to powering up that Luminion, right, and taking an attack off with that. It's a little bit of extra damage. It does cost him Rash Gate, but you eliminate the Luminion from the board, and therefore you don't have that liability moving forward. It is a play that we could potentially see at some point. It is costly, but it's also potentially very, very powerful to take away a win condition from your opponent in the game. Especially attacking in to Cresselia because it does 120 damage yep. uh, compared to that Cramorant that only does 110. Angus did find his first Corellia of game two, able to refinement and continue this chain going as the Fog Crystal for an energy. But I didn't see much else of Hurlia in the hand. I think there was an Ultra Ball, potentially. Yeah, there is an Ultra Ball. There's Gardevoir EX, Seishen copies, two Gardevoir EXs. So Rare Candy Gardevoir could be nice um, because this is the second turn of the game, right? <laughs> so Rare Candy Gardevoir could be good to try and pressure. It's really hard for Lost Box to immediately piece a response. And Angus might not know the exact card counts or energy counts of Victor, but Victor is running the bare minimum, and with two energies prized, one in Lost Zone, one in play, Victor would need exactly the other four energy cards and a Drapion to answer a card of RDX. However, with that retreat, that does take away that possibility. Doesn't even <laughs> look at the other cards once again, just finds the rare candy, which is nice, but because we've already retreated, I don't think we're seeing an attack here. I'm pretty sure Angus doesn't believe that you just look at the top three, but has been finding <laughs> the exact item he's been looking for. And Collapse Stadium, Ooh. going to be able to get rid of that Radiant Greninja, but also helps Victor here in getting rid of that Luminion V, which is huge. Exactly. Both players getting both benefited and hurt, I guess, from that. Angus does essentially eliminate Victor's turn with that Cramorant attack but also eliminates that possibility to knock out the Luminion. Victor could have powered up Luminion, gotten it out of play, but it would have cost him at least a Mirage Gate to do so. So, uh, bittersweet Collapse Stadium right there. If you can do that Collapse Stadium and get an attack off, that's how you pull ahead, right? Because then you have effectively set them back a turn and gotten ahead a turn yourself. Now, the Rare Candy was not found, so it wasn't possible, but that would have been the ideal. This is still a pretty ideal position for Angus, though. Not being a single prize ahead yet before you start attacking, that's the dream. Victor has the escape rope to bring up the Comfey with that energy. Flower selecting gets rid of Battle VIP Pests. And with that, seven in the Lost Zone means Mirage Gate is a possibility. But again, all the energy is already basically accounted for in the Lost Zone, prizes, and the hand. And that's the risk you run with such a low energy count. Eight energy in this Lost Zone box deck. Uh, it, it's skirting the line. It's definitely, like, there's a bare minimum, and it feels like eight is a little under <laughs> that bare minimum <laughs> to me. Uh, no jet energy either, so I feel like jet energy is a good compromise. You can go down on the escape ropes or the switch cards, and play that jet energy, you get two cards at once, right? You get extra energy and you get 
the switching effect, but no, Victor has to decide, and it's clearly working out for him really, really well at this point in time. This is also working out for him. Boss's orders brings up the Curlia, taking another easy knockout with Cramorant here, and leaving Angus with a lot to do to try to claw back into this game. Yeah, Doesn't really have that Gardevoir EX, though. Yeah, I really like this play, though, and I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but he did choose to knock out the Curlia that evolved from the 60 HP Ralts. And that actually allows Victor to potentially Echo and Horn back that specific Ralts to open up a two price turn against the Mew and that Ralts. Or if Angus recovers that Ralts and rebenches it, also opens up that. So I'm not sure if that was on purpose or not. Um, if it was, it was very subtle, right? And it's a very small thing. But that could actually come into play in a much closer game than we saw in game one. Angus played Niono, shuffled the hand to the bottom, drew six cards, Fog Crystal shuffled the deck, grabs that psychic energy, Victor's hand goes to the bottom, draws five, and there is that Cresselia with Moonglow Reverse. We'll be able to finally spread some damage here and spread some energies around Angus's side of the board. Going to be able to take a knockout on that Sableye on the bench if he chooses, and yep, that is likely the target when your opponent is at seven or more cards in the law zone. Indeed. In case you're wondering why damage was not put from Gardevoir EX, they're just taking a few small shortcuts because both players know exactly what Priscilla does and the Mungo would recover that damage anyways, and um, time is running low, right? So uh, only one price has been taken in this game too. Definitely not seeing a game three, but very important to really close out this game two for Angus if he wants to get a point out of this. Mirage Gate along with Super Odd found off the course of experiment. Super Odd is priority number one, trying to get those energies back into the deck so you can actually use that powerful item card in Mirage Gate. Also eyeing down a couple stadiums in that Artisan and Pokey Stop, but it's looking like you might honestly get rid of both of them. Yeah, definitely a difficult choice here. Um, Collapse Stadium is not actively hurting you, it's just making things a little bit more awkward in terms of preparing for Iono by having a lot of cards down, thinning your hand and whatnot. Uh, but the Super, right, recovering Sableye, recovering your attacker, recovering energy as well, gonna be super, super crucial right here. And that super heavy rock. ball, yeah, super, <laughs> super yeah. special for Super Rod. Uh, heavy ball recovering that Sableye from the prices and allowing the back-to-back -back Sableye attacks, which would love to bench both, right? That could be nice, but that's where the Collapse Stadium will affect Victor a little bit. No more stadiums on his side, so it's up to Angus to take that out at some point if necessary, but Angus can pretty comfortably play with four bench Pokemon at this point in time. Yeah, it actually helps him a little bit, uh, Combat Echoing Horn, uh, not being able to pull up that 60 HP Ralts like you were mentioning. Sableye on the bench now. Switch cart to Comfey. Still need that 10th card in the Lost Zone, so Flower Selecting will get that done. I think that Switch Cart Colors is Experiment. Yeah. So, valuing the Colors as defense for Iono, already one plate, of course, but very important to be able to continue that after you get Iono, even if it's going to be at the bottom. Any sort of shuffle and then draw can allow you to find it. And we do see the Sableye, we do see the Super Rod putting back, once again, Luminion. Yeah, Luminion being a key card, already useful for Victor, and got the reward of that Collapse Stadium, but having access to that Luminion to be able to search for Call Res, or if Balbot gets played for a boss's orders as well, and then just having it on your bench with the Force Seal Stone, your opponent decides to target it, then you didn't get IO Node, so it's basically the same thing. Super Rod was played to shuffle back in that Sableye, a couple energy. And Victor has everything needed for the turn, so Lost Vine will actually take the knockout on the Mew 60 on that Manaphy, ignoring the Cresselia this time around. Yeah, ignoring Cresselia, ignoring like the big Pokemon that are available for Angus, just trying to get those small, quick, uh, straightforward prices, being 10 off of that double price knockout. 
but the echoing horn could definitely factor in here. Energy from hand and retreating the Gardevoir EX to get more of those energies in the discard, just so you can bring them back and use that Moonglow reverse. And we see Iono here trying to disrupt Victor's hand yet again. Five for Angus, four for Victor. Does find, I believe, the Super Rod, uh, if I saw it correctly. Yeah, the constant Iono is very important for Angus to be able to keep up with Victor's pressure right here. Uh, we see once again the small shortcut of the damage, healing, tw or taking two damage counters from each of your Pokemon, KOing that Sableye, which uh, puts Victor in a still decent spot, just needs to be able to keep up attackers, right? But being tight in prizes is definitely a more comfortable position for Angus so early in the game. Yeah, four and four seems like a lot. It's going to be a prize each pretty much for the rest of the game, but not being at a deficit is very important for Angus to be able to close this one out. Now, did find the Echoing Horn off the flower, selecting Super Rod, put back in the Sableye. Here's a Mirage Gate, getting it down a couple energies, but no Sableye. So just those two energies on Comfey. Thinning the deck a little bit to try and find that Sableye. No two price possibility for Victor, so could eliminate that Cresselia finally, could go after the Manaphy as well and place damage somewhere else. But definitely a, a precarious situation for Victor here. Not super straightforward and how to uh, cleanly follow this up. And doesn't seem like he'll be able to do much beyond uh, spit innocently from Cameron here. That might be the window of opportunity that Angus needs to try and make something happen here. But yeah, just the Echoing Horn, a retreat to the Cramorant. That Iono really putting in a ton of work against Victor. All the good cards are at the bottom of the deck. Indeed, and this is what you want to see as Gardevoir. You really want to make sure that you make up for that price deficit and eventually make them whiff, right? Making them whiff a price card is very, very important. Uh, Victor could still get a two price turn if they manage to find Sableye Plus, powering it up by knocking out something like the Cresselia or the Manaphy. Very surprised that they're not choosing to use uh, Cresselia, but valuing just the protection, right? Knocking out the Greninja as a resource. Um, Cramorant cannot take a return KO on this Gardevoir and getting ahead in the price race. Flower selecting. Battle VIP pass goes to Lost Zone. I did not see the other card. Maybe four Seal Stone. So with a couple of those Pokemon B in hand, we'll be able to use that Star Alchemy to search for a card and hopefully continue this. But I'm not sure. Maybe Clara, if you retreat and there's a Sableye in the discard. But I don't know if both of them got shuffled back in with that Super Rod. Uh, I think one might be available. In the discard pile, I guess we can find no? out. No, you're right. Yeah, both are back into the deck. So perhaps Colris to try and find yep. Sableye plus Psychic Energy. There's one, there's two. Yep. Yeah, so it's going to be most likely Colris. Having that two-price liability doesn't feel good. You've seen one boss's orders from Angus. There is access to Palpad. Do you just get the Sableye here instead? You already have the Mirage Gate. Yeah, that's looking yeah. like what Victor's doing here. It guarantees it, and that way you can get a couple of prize cards. All right, it does guarantee this follow-up. It does guarantee prize cards, as you mentioned. But then what else, right? Oh, is it a three prize turn, though? Six, three, and one? It is oh, going wow. to be a three prize turn here for Victor. So making sure that he has that guarantee of prize cards. And that's where that not using Moonglow Reverse last turn uh, really just to help Victor out, apparently, leaving that damage on the board for this Sableye to munch on and take three prize cards in one lost mine here. Six on the Mew, three on the Manaphy, and one on that Cresselia. Three knockouts with one lost mine. Even. And you get a little extra damage. And even a little change left over. Really nice to see. Really cool play. But now, this Iono to one. 
will that be what we see here? No, we, we, we don't want to talk about that, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't see an Iono in Angus's hand. Going to have to pal pad back two of them, maybe try to rely on Shining Arcana to draw into it. Yep, it's the only chance Angus has here. I mean, Victor's hand doesn't necessarily have the game-winning card. The game-winning card would be another Sableye plus Psychic in order to KO Guard of War, but you definitely feel a lot more comfortable with Iono. I would love to see at least the Ultra Ball be played. I don't think there's any targets left for level. There's the, thin, the extra deck thinning. There might be a Kirlia somewhere there. There is. Um, I would love to see the Ultra Ball as well. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't get an extra card of the deck. Now that the deck is a lot thinner, you know, there's a lot more merit to using those cards. Every, car every card you thin ends up being an extra oh, no. way. But no, no Iono this turn. I really would have loved to see that Ultra Ball that is exactly being played right now. There was a Shining Arcana card of our believe left. Yep. It was the next card. It was Iono the next was card. the next card. Can't imagine Angus has more than like 12 or 13 cards left in the deck. So getting an extra card out, it, it's almost like giving yourself an extra 10% chance. That's huge, right? In the beginning of the game, give yourself 2%, 3% is a little bit. But an extra 10%, that's just so, so much. There's the worker played. This card's that collapsed stadium, draws into a couple Iono. So if Vicar doesn't win this turn, you can have Ooh. that, but wow. Is Found. the Luminium the game, or do you still need a switch out? Uh, yeah, you still need switch out. You can get Clara, but you still need to find either Mirage Gate or... Now, Ooh. putting back two supporters here, I don't know if I like both of them, but you want that Clara because you don't want to have to choose between that and a switch. Playing it right now, I guess you have that Radiant Greninja, but then you can't bench it. You can't bench... Uh, you also just made the deck bigger, Yeah. right? By putting those Colrus back. So if you see a Colrus of the Comfey instead of getting closer to the switching card, I feel like Victor might have gotten a little ahead of himself right there. Not Nothing major, but... Um, I mean, with the two Pokemon on the bench, could get dicey here. Angus one boss away from winning the game. And we see the Colrus. We saw a Colrus oh, that he no. just put back. I think the Palpat was a little precipitated right here for sure. And now you see the time actually run out. I, I believe there was a minute extent, an extension, but I'm not sure if that was added on to the timer. So this potentially could be turn zero uh, for this match here. And still we can see a conclusion. Uh, Victor wins the, wins the match. If Angus wins, it's a tie. And it benches the Radiant Greninja here, so no Sableye. All right, so we do have confirmation that Victor is turn zero. So just he just bench locked himself. So Angus has two turns to find boss. If he doesn't take a knockout, then that means Victor cannot play down Sableye to attack. So Angus actually has two turns to find boss's orders as that Gardevoir EX is going nowhere. And the Palpat also didn't put back the boss's orders, which could have also been a potential game-winning card by using Raikou um, or Luminion even to knock out Gardevoir. So could, could it be the the nerves getting to Victor in this close of the game. has a lot of energy available. Can't get a hit in into this Gardevoir, but chooses to go for the Confei instead. Um, the other Colrus put back into the deck Indeed. along with the Super Rod. You have to take the Super Rod here. Uh, it feels like the name of this game has been uh, a lack of energies for Victor, at least in the deck. There's a pass of the turn. Iono in hand, energy. Is there the boss's orders? All right, I believe they're calling time now on Angus's turn. Or maybe Victor's turn. All right, either way, turn one right now, it seems like. There's the Iono, so no boss's orders here. 
Oh, That's going to give Victor a little bit of an extra turn to try to find that save life, find something. But again, like you said, if Angus doesn't take a knockout, there's no way to bench save life. All right, Shining Arcana, no bosses orders in Angus's hand. I think if you're Angus, yeah, you take the knockout off of one card, them having a switching card, a Sableye and a Psychic, not super likely, right? Whereas the only Pokemon that can survive a hit from Gardevoir X is Raikou, nothing can survive a hit from China Arcana, so you basically put yourself in a situation where if they have it, they have it, right? But that way, you don't need anything in your hand to be able to pull off this win. All Ooh. right, Colrus's experiment. I guess that's why we put it in the deck. That Pablo. is why we put it in the deck. Found the Sableye has a no force of energy, though. Yeah, it's no energy. Gonna have to rely on this flower selecting, maybe. Is that, yeah, escape rope. So you have a way to get it in the active. Now, we did see the Psychic and Rashkid at the bottom of the deck, though. Not using flower selecting. We're gonna fleet footed. Mirage Gate! Oh, it was what? Mirage Gate! Mirage Gate what? off the top. There's the handshake. No need to show the energy uh, in the deck. Wow, what a turn of events. I mean, are there two energies left? There's one? There was only one. Oh, there no. was only one. So Angus. Actually, oh, would no. not have lost. <laughs> what just a little, happened? A little early concession. Oh just assuming gosh. the energies are there, but the problems that Victor had throughout the entire game with having those energies in the deck for Mirage Gate did not. Like, it came to the end, but oh, still wow. able to pull it out thanks to Angus just scooping it up. Yeah, I mean, like, when you see Mirage Gate, you know your opponent has the win essentially, but wait for them to show you the actual win, right? Yeah. You're already in time. You're not saving any time. That was, I mean, the learning experience, right? We're at the stream. There's definitely many things. Um, I could tell that both players were definitely uh, on the edge of their seats playing this one out. Um, wow. That, that was certainly, I fully expected a 